A'uzu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahir rahman rahim. Welcome to our Ramadan series. With this segment, we are going to look at some of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding the teachings that he gave out towards Ramadan. Now, in the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we understand that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it gets to Ramadan, he does certain things to prepare himself towards the month of Ramadan. For instance, we are, we understand that before the month of Ramadan, in the month of Shaban, which is the month before the month of Ramadan, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would usually engage in a lot of nawafil fasting, that is the optional fasting, in order to prepare himself spiritually and then physically before the month of Ramadan. My name is Yunus Hassan, a student of Al-Quran, a multiple international award winner. I, I was lucky to go for an exchange program in the U.S. where I studied in the Austin High School for one academic year. At Austin High School, I also had the opportunity to participate in debates where I won a first place trophy. I became a debate champion in 2009 in Austin, Minnesota, in the United States of America. And since 2009 now, I've been engaged in so many community service. I've also been to some parts of the world trying to seek more knowledge and see how I can help improve society. I've been to Morocco, I've been to Turkey, Australia. In Australia, I was lucky to win the world best award for community service. And uh, I hope that these are some of the things that motivates me to do more for community service. And part of this uh, series that we are doing, the Ramadan series, is to see how we can help one another to come back and understand our essence in this world that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For today's hadith, we are going to look at a narration by Talha bin Ubaidullah in Buhari, in the book of fasting, hadith number one. It is narrated by Talha bin Ubaidullah. He says, A man with unkept hair came to Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, inform me what Allah has made compulsory for me as regards the prayers. And the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ replied, You have to observe or offer perfectly the five composite prayers in a day and night, unless you want to pray nawafal. Then the man went on to ask, Inform me what Allah has made compulsory for me as regards fasting. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam replied, You have to fast during the whole month of Ramadan unless you want to fast more nawafil. That's the optional fasting. Then the man went on to ask again, Tell me how much zakat Allah has made or enjoined upon me. And thus, Allah's messenger informed him about the rules in regards to zakat. And then the man said, By Allah, I will not do any nawafil prayers or fasting. I will make sure to do the composite ones. And thus the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, Indeed, if only the man has spoken the truth, he will succeed. That's to say that he will be granted paradise. Insha'Allah. That's the hadith from Sahih Bukhari, Book of Fasting, hadith number one. First, we have to understand that the month of Ramadan is one of the pillars in Islam. You know, there are five pillars in Islam. We have the Shahada, which is to uh, testify that there is no God worthy of worship, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his messenger. And the other pillar of Islam is Salah, that is to observe our five daily prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other pillar in Islam is the fasting, that is the Ramadan, which is composite that when it comes to the month of Ramadan. Another pillar in Islam is zakat, that is charity. There are some compulsory charity that we need to give out. And the other pillar in Islam is the Hajj, that is to go for on pilgrimage to the Holy Land in Mecca. What are some of the preparations that we need to do before we go into the month of Ramadan? We don't go into the month of Ramadan simply because we just want the bounty in this world. We want bounty in this world and in the year after. So there's a need for us to pray for our intentions so that when we go into the month of Ramadan, we we'll observe Ramadan and observe our fasting and get the reward for this dunya and in the year after, inshallah. So one thing that we need to do going to the month of Ramadan, first we need to pray for our intentions. Let's pray for our conscience, our mindset. Now, 
to prefer our mindset and be clear of what we need and or what we are supposed to do in the month of Ramadan, we need to study and understand the teachings of Islam. Let's learn the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let's learn Al Quran. What are the teachings of Al Quran? What are the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? We can learn from other scholars in Islam. So seeking knowledge is very important, as Allah subhanahu wa taala has stated in Surah Al-Alaq. Ikra bismu rabbika lazi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq ikra wa rabbuka akram al-lazi Allah wa bilqalam Allah man insana ma alam ya alam. Here Allah subhanahu wa taala is telling us that seeking knowledge is very important. Whatever we are going to do, we need to seek knowledge. So going to the month of Ramadan, we need to be people who are ready to seek knowledge. Let's prefer our intention by prefer our mindset to be ready to learn. Because once we are ready to learn, we can go through the month of Ramadan successfully. There are so many things that we can learn from other scholars, from other books, from other sources that we can learn. And then we'll have a good and successful time throughout the month of Ramadan. Another thing that we need to look at when we are to prefer our intentions is our hearts. Let's prefer our emotions. Let's be ready for it. Because sometimes you might put your mind into something. But if your heart is not into it, or if you are not having the feeling towards dedicating your yourself into it, you probably will not be able to succeed in it. Let's say, for instance, you have an interview. You have a job interview tomorrow. You know that from the day before, you are going to be prepared. Your mind is going to be on the interview. Your, your heart is going to be, your emotions are going to be in it. You are going to do all that you can to pre prepare yourself for this interview. Now, on the day of the interview, you want to put up the best of performance or impress whoever is interviewing you so that you can get the job. The same way when we are going to the month of Ramadan, we need to prepare ourselves psychologically and prepare ourselves emotionally so that when we go into the month of Ramadan, we can perform very well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our ibadah and will get the reward from it. Another thing that we need to look at preparing ourselves towards Ramadan is to look at our physical preparation. First off, we need to look at our medical conditions. Let's look at our health. Some of us perhaps will have health issues. This is the time for us to contact our doctors. Okay, contact your health professional and see if you are fit to fast during the month of Ramadan. So perhaps some people have ulcer and some other health conditions that perhaps will not be uh, fitting for them to fast during the month of Ramadan. So this is the time for you to contact your health professional or your medical doctor. Now, another thing that you need to do physically is to prepare your food. Make sure that when you are to start the month of Ramadan, you have things ready so that you don't get confused and get stuck. What are you going to take during the uh, uh, suhoor, that's the dawn meal that you need to take before you start the fast. And what are you going to take after you break the fast? That's the iftar. Make sure you make you do all these preparations before you go into the month of Ramadan. Another thing that we need to look at is how we wake up early. Some of us normally do not wake up very early. We are not used to it. And this is the time that we need to make good use of this opportunity, especially waking up very early to do some powerful prayers or tahajud, pray some tahajud prayers before we actually take our suhoor or before we actually take the dawn meal. Now, if you are not used to it, perhaps you can even put on your alarm. Set your alarm, and your alarm will wake you as early as possible. Well, you can decide which time you want to wake up, but somewhere around 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. will be good. If you cannot, at least 4 a.m., if you wake up very early, you, you pray some now for prayers or tajud, uh, optional prayers, before you actually take your meal. Now, one other thing that we need to look at again, waking up, perhaps you will live with your family. You wake up early and then you try to wake another person up but if you are living alone maybe setting an alarm will be very good now if you set an alarm make sure that you put whatever you have uh, the device if it's, if it's the phone or it's a clock you make sure you put it away from you so that when you when you wake up when the alarm uh, sounds and you wake up you don't just get up and put it on snooze and then you go back to bed make sure that you put it far away that when the alarm bells you can wake up and then perform your now for prayers before you actually take your soho. Now, another thing that we need to look at going to Ramadan, we have to check our social media engagement. It's very important. Sometimes it becomes difficult for us to even, you know, stay away from our phones. Okay, all the time we are on our phones, whether we are on WhatsApp, we are on, uh, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook all the time. This is the time for us to try and minimize that because social media can be a distraction for us during this month of Ramadan because this month of Ramadan is, some, is a month that we need to Try to uplift our spirit, uplift our uh, iman, our faith towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is not to say that you do, you're not supposed to go to, on social media. You can go on social media, but you need to be very careful. You have to look at what, what are some of the purposes that 
would lead you to going on social media. So one thing that we have to, want to look at is that if you are in a group on social media and you realize that the kind of group that you are in would not support your spiritual upliftment, perhaps this is the time for you to leave the group. If you are in a WhatsApp group or whichever group that you are in, in on social media, you need to look at it again. Another thing that we can uh, do with regards to social media is that we have to consider what we are going on on social media to do. For instance, if you are someone who is following an imam or you are following a scholar on social media, perhaps with, in, during this month of Ramadan, they are going to be posting things that you want to go on social media and learn from. So let's be very careful with our engagements on social media. That's one thing I would like us to look at again. And TV, television, distractions. It's one other way that we can get distracted when we are trying to uplift our Iman and uplift our spirit during the month of Ramadan. Let's try to minimize our TV time, whether you are on Netflix or whatever you are doing. All these things are not haram. It's not that it is bad. But if you look at the essence of what you are, you are trying to achieve here in the month of Ramadan, there are certain things that you have to cut off, especially things that will distract you from engaging much in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One other thing that I will recommend is that you can download apps that will help you, whether they are apps about uh, Islam, maybe Hadith or even Quran, or some other lectures that you can download and it will help you understand more and then improve upon your Iman and your practices during the month of Ramadan, inshallah. So before we end, I would like us to look at one thing. I'm going to leave a question for us so that uh, we see how many of us will get it correct during the comment session? And this, quest, this question is, at what age was the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam made a prophet? This is a question that I'm going to leave with us. And then let's see how many of us can get it correct at the comment session. And next time when we come, we we'll would try to answer that question and then see which other thing that we'll discuss. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.